Emily, Emily, Emily Reed. We've known I'm each bad. other for a long time, and it's a pleasure to have you in here today. Thank you. Because I just love what you've been doing with your watercolors, and I love the new avenues that you're venturing out into. Getting a lot of color there. It's really, <laughs> really neat. And Thank you. And I love the fact that the first piece you brought in today was a truck. Yeah. Tell us the story about this truck. This is a very old, rustic truck that has been abandoned along with many other vehicles. I saw it on my way to Home Depot of all places and I always have my camera with me so the closest I could get was across the street without being in the street. So I was taking pictures and zooming in for close-ups of just details on these old vehicles, even something that looked like an old covered wagon that was so dilapidated that it was just bones. But I was taking pictures and a woman came up to me and said, what is your problem? Ooh, that sounds like trouble. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, um, I don't have a problem, I'm just taking some pictures. I think they're neat. And she goes, oh, well, okay. And I said, what did you think I was doing? She says, well, we've had people complaining about all those rusty old junky vehicles. And I thought you were here collecting evidence or something. I said, no, matter of fact, I want to paint them. So she said, have at it. And when the painting was finished, I went back and there's an adobe, small adobe house sitting on there. And I walked around the property until I found a way to get in. And I gave him a copy of the print. Oh, I bet you that excited. Yeah, you know that's that's neat. that's the you know that's the kind of story that that artists you know on a piece like that is just yeah. really and it's got a great ending. You know. Yeah. You know, beginning and end. It's it's so neat. Let's look at another one of your pieces real quick. Oh, one of my old favorites. It's called Conestoga Wagon. I just, you know, the western, the rustic. Well, you really Something do like that. We, we've gone yeah. to 42 Chibis back, yeah, back to, back. where's the horses at on this? <laughs> oh, that's coming next. Ah, Ooh. but this, these are watercolors, correct? Yes. And, and that's what you mainly do is a lot of watercolors. I did well, watercolors you, as as for known you, like been, 20 years. Yeah. Um, but I was always trying to loosen up. You know, I'd see these beautiful watercolors that people do and they're so, they just flow. Flow, because they're, they're loose. Yeah. And I'm, as hard as I try, I end up drawn to something like architecture. You can't flow a building. <laughs> no? No. But you got a lot of flow in this one, and there's great colors on this one. I really like that. Thank and you. I like the fact that it's just got that rustic feel yeah. to it. So it'd be really great for a Western room. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And then marbles. Whatever possession to try to paint <laughs> marbles. Any glass, any reflection is always paint, but you captured it. Well, thank you. I'm glad you said that. Um, I just lost my marbles. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> but I found them again and got them back in the jar, and I don't, I love color. Uh, that's obvious. Yeah. So I decided that was one place I could get a lot of it. That's really, really, really neat. And I like the old lid on it with the old threads <laughs> and everything. And you got some big ones, the little ones, off yeah. shape and everything else. Looks like another little jar behind him, too, kind of. There is. So, and now you kind of, we're stepping into something new for you. Yeah, that's where that part of loosening up comes in. This definitely looks a lot looser yeah. than the tight water. Yes, yeah, yeah. And this next piece is called what? This is Mardi Gras. I can see that. One of my personal favorites. Purples and yellows. Yeah. And I was yeah. down in New Orleans, and you uh, captured Mardi Gras. Great, great. This is paint pouring with acrylic. I've Very seen it Very messy, done. but a whole lot of fun. So you never know what you're going to get. You don't get two things twice. Yep. You cannot plan one. Oh, you can. You can in your mind and in your heart, and then you step back and wait and see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the boss, but it's and, a lot of fun. And this next piece is very similar. It's mm -hmm. not similar in the, that it's Mardi Gras, but it's the same type and the same style. Exactly. And what is that one called? That one is Purple Rain. 
is like the Purple Rain, the song Purple Rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you definitely captured the. How did you get the the white spots on top though? And that's the intriguing part. That's using silicone. Once you've established your base and poured on your colors and done whatever technique you're going to do, if you had silicone mixed in the paint in the beginning, then you go ahead and pour your paint, you manipulate the canvas, tilt it, do, you know, get whatever shape you're going for, and you set it down quickly and leave it alone, and you get your blowtorch, and you go over it. Because you want to pop the air bubbles in the paint. Ah. And the silicone comes up too. And it leaves, it kind of looks like salt. Yeah. That's what it reminds me yeah. of. Yeah, salt in a watercolor. Yeah. Same effect with this. Matter of fact, I was going to swear up and down that's what it was, but I'm glad you explained that because <laughs> she's given out more secrets. And, uh, mm. But anyway, it's been really great having you here today. Well, thank and you. And learning a lot about you and a lot about your techniques. And I can't wait to see some more in your future. Well, we're doing Art Affair 2021. Got my fingers crossed. Oh, oh, oh. We'll be there.